All right, let's dive into chapter eight, compressor motor controls. So our learning objectives are three phase motors, contactors and starters, single phase motors, start relays and capacitors, motor overloads, and then on to troubleshooting motors. First, we'll talk about three phase motors. And if you have worked in residential air conditioning your entire career, you may have never worked on a three phase motor. You'll run into them quite often in commercial refrigeration in the bigger systems and also in larger air conditioning systems. So it's important that you know a few things about them. So they use three phase motors in the larger systems because they have some advantages over the single phase motors. The operating costs for a three phase motor in comparison to single phase motors are uh, much greater. So if you have a single phase motor and a three phase motor of the same horsepower, that three phase motor will use considerably less uh, current and amp draw than its, its uh, sister motor that is in the single phase. It has very high starting torque and does not need any components to start. No capacitors, uh, no relays, no start relays or anything else like that. But there is a problem that you may run into from time to time with three phase motors and that's um, they're subject to a, a phase loss and voltage unbalances and what happens is when there's three legs of power coming in sometimes the incoming power will lose a leg of the three phase or it'll become unbalanced meaning that the voltage of the three legs of power coming in are not the same. I had one of our my students that ran into this not too long ago where there was a hundred volt difference between the incoming voltages on one of the legs and it burned up a large um, three-phase motor. So you should always be checking the for voltage unbalance in um, a three-phase motor situation. And the way that you do that is you use the formula which is represented here and the and the VU stands for voltage unbalance, which equals the voltage deviation divided by the voltage average. So let's take a look at, at an example. So you'll take your voltmeter and you will measure incoming power between L1 and L2. Now that's not a minus sign, that's just showing that you measure between L1 and L2. So in this example, you would measure and record 230 volts. Then you'll measure between incoming line 2 and incoming line 3, that's L1 and L2, and then you read 240 volts, and then you'll measure across L1 and L3, and in this example it's 245 volts. Okay, so you then you have to figure the average voltage. So just like you calculate any other type of average, you take all of your voltage measurements that you've recorded, all three of them here, you add them together and divide by three. So if you add these three together and divide by three, you end up with a 238 volt average. That corresponds to this part of the, of the calculation right here. The next thing that you want, you want to calculate is the voltage deviation. The voltage deviation is the difference between each one of your measurements. So you take the and, and the difference between each one of your measurements and the voltage average. So you take the 238 volt average, which is represented right here, and you subtract your first measurement of 230 volts. And that was what we got from that measurement right there. Then you, then you take 240, which is our second measurement, which is we got right there, and you subtract 238 volts, that's 2 volts, and you do the same with the 245 on our third measurement, and we have a 7 volt deviation. And then you're going to use the highest deviation, which in this example is 8 volts. Then you're going to want to apply it to the formula. Now remember, we're solving for the voltage unbalance, which is the VU. We just figured 
the voltage deviation and the voltage average in this in these first two formulas now we want to come up with the voltage unbalance so you take the voltage deviation which was 8 volts you divide it by the voltage average which was 238 volts that comes out to 0 0.034 and if you remember from from school you have to move that decimal point over two places to get your percentage and we end up with 3.4 volts of voltage unbalance so is that good or bad doesn't seem like much but a voltage unbalance over two percent can damage a three-phase motor it will certainly overheat it and shorten its life so if you run across a three-phase motor that has a voltage imbalance greater than two percent you need to find out why that might is uh, the instant I, instance I talked about earlier where there was a huge voltage unbalance uh, happened to be that some somebody went in and rewired the circuit at the circuit breaker and stole a leg of power and for whatever reason they did that so what you'll have to do is you'll have to go back to the circuit breaker in the breaker panel and and measure l1 to l2 l2 to l3 and l1 to l3 again and see if you still have the same voltage unbalance if you do it's time to call an electrician